going on all my nursing brothers and sisters? I hope that you all are having a wonderful day. I know I've been a little MIA lately. I've been getting some questions in my Instagram DMs, as well as my Facebook DMs. Like, what's going on? What happened to Nurse Chung? Are you not gonna be posting anymore? And I wanna let you know that I am fine and everything is okay. And it's actually great news because Nurse Chung will be posting more often. So what does that mean? Instead of posting two days a week, like we had previously discussed, I will actually be posting five days a week. And why is that? Because you all have specific content requests as well as just questions regarding healthcare in general and I want to be here to answer those questions for you. So yes, I will be posting more frequently. There are going to be a couple different things going on with the channel in regards to not just posting about pre-nursing, I'll be posting about you know graduate nursing as well as nursing school as well as what happens when you get out of nursing school. So there's going to be a variety of content. So if you're just starting nursing and you're getting into this world and you're wondering what lies ahead of me when I finally become a nurse, this is the channel to watch. I'll be covering all of those content for you. But in the meantime, I want to go ahead and get started on the last part of our ATIT's examination regarding reading. So let's get started. you're an oldie but a goodie make sure that you're subscribed and hit that bell notification it does let you know when I post new content and I will be posting new content now five days a week so keep an eye open for that make sure that you follow me on my social media I am on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and make sure that you comment like and share these videos with your friends Let's get started. So getting started on our ATIT's reading, we're gonna start covering text features and reference sources. So what is that? Text features are defined as the elements that stand out in a text because the passage uses a tool to emphasize them. So there's kind of several different ways that text features works. It could either be in the organization of the text, it could provide indirect information, it could emphasize certain pieces of information, as well as it can aid in the reading to quickly locate vital text. So what are some examples of text features? So we're looking at headings and subheadings of the text. We're also looking at footnotes, potentially sidebar notes, index, glossary, your table of contents. There might even be graphs. There might be some graph or chart that you have to interpret as well as a map. There might be a key and a legend that you have to kind of figure out what the text is specifically asking you. And there might be formatting. So some words might be italicized, bolded, or underlined, and you kind of have to figure out what that means and what the author is trying to emphasize. So an important note in regards to the ATIST's portions of the reading, when you're looking at text features, you want to keep in mind that you should be aware of what the text features use is, what they're asking you, and what they're actually being used for. So another important tip when you're taking the ATIST's reading portion of the test is you want to figure out what the text features are trying to tell you. So text features are important elements of the text. You should be aware of the reason they're being used and ask yourself why are they being used. Kind of, you have to interpret what the text is telling you. So moving on to reference sources, they're really primarily broken down into three categories. You have your primary, your secondary, and your tetrary. So for example, if any of you are Harry Potter fans out there, if you're not, I don't know if we can be friends. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But Harry Potter is a great example. So the book of Harry Potter, the one that was written, is a primary source. So if you're looking for a secondary source, you're looking for books that talk about Harry Potter. Um, and in regards to treachery sources, you're looking like for a bibliography listing of books and articles that have been written about Harry Potter. So you're looking for kind of like a summary. So your primary source is the actual source, Harry Potter. Your secondary source is a book that is written about Harry Potter. And your treachery sources are your summary of books that were written about Harry Potter. I hope that helps you. So let's go over some primary sources. So we've got literacy texts, we're talking about speeches, maps, research data, historical documents, letters or emails, um, photographs, autobiographies, interviews, and video and audio recordings. It's really any original document that was created by the author. Secondary sources help interpret information that was originally published somewhere else. So like we said before, biographies, reprints of artwork could be a secondary source, um, book reviews, research, essays, articles that interpret other works Work. When you're in nursing school, you're going to be doing a lot of that, so all of your essays and things that you submit will be secondary sources. Um, textbooks and reference books, all are secondary sources. It's gathering information and interpreting it based on other originally published works. 
lastly are tertiary um, sources. You know, it's like an index, textual consolidation of secondary sources. So your summaries, your bibliographies, your encyclopedias, um, some textbooks, database information, dictionaries, and travel guides all fall within that category. So another important tip is that the ATITs focuses on your ability to categorize the sources and locate the information with a primary source document. So there's going to be a lot of primary source documents in which you're going to have to interpret information, but you're also going to need to know what falls within that secondary source as well as that tertiary source. So moving on to data questions, they require identification provided in different kinds of sources. So what exactly does that mean? Um, for example, identifying the proper resource to references in order to obtain information, um, following directions, reading labels and ingredients lists, identifying sources, analyzing the outcomes, um, recognizing steps in a sequence, as well as looking up information are a few data example questions that you will see on the ATITs. So let's kind of break some of that down, the most important ones. So to start off, following direction questions, they're going to be defined as a set set of directions, and the user has to have the ability to identify the outcome that occurs when the directions are followed. So this is what you need to do, bum 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 bum, and you follow those directions. That's what we're looking at. Reading labels and ingredients lists. Questions will ask the user to determine whether a particular food or product is suitable for an individual with certain dietary needs. Now as healthcare professionals, one of the things that we are known to do is look at people's diets. When you've got somebody who is a diabetic or they are on a medication that requires a specific diet, these are the kind of questions that are gonna be extremely important when you go into nursing school. So make sure that you review those questions and you learn as much as you can because it will help you later on when you are in nursing school. Trust me, I've been there. You've got this. So analyzing outcome questions. They're going to ask the user to identify patterns in the headings and the subheadings of the outline. Um, identifying sources questions. They're going to ask the user to identify the correct information source to use in order to obtain the required information. And of course, looking up information questions. Ask the user to look up information and answer a question identifying the information that you collected. Now these questions can be either text information or graph information. It's best that you know both so that you can answer these questions effectively. So moving on to vocabulary, you know they're not going to let you get away with reading unless you know your vocabulary. So vocabulary questions are defined by providing a meaning of a vocabulary word found within the passage of a text. So let's break this down a little bit further. Denotation is defined by a word that would be found in a dictionary. So it's important that many words have more than one meaning. So it's important to understand specifically what the text is using that word for so that you can effectively answer that question in regards to what that word actually means. Um, connotation is defined with what a word suggests or implies. So for example, the word childish can mean that someone is childlike and youthful as well as someone is immature and has poor behavior. So those are things that you're going to have to interpret within the text when you're taking the ATITs. And lastly, we're moving on to that figurative language. So that's defined as an important meaning through creative figurative devices such as similes, metaphors, personifications, and hyperboles. So a lot of big words, but <laughs> They're okay, we're gonna go through them. So simile, it's a comparison of using like or as. So as brave as a lion, that would be an example of a simile. Um, metaphor is a comparison without the use of like or as. So all the world's a stage. So that's kind of what you're looking for in regards to your metaphors. Your hyperboles are an exaggeration. I feel like all of my videos are hyperboles. <laughs> um, this bicycle is a thousand years old, you know. my. Grandfather has lived 150,000 years, you know, big exaggerations. Those are your hyperboles. Uh, personifications are giving an inanimate object human characteristics. So the alarm clock yells at me every single morning. We've all been there, trust me, it's only going to get worse when you get to nursing school when you have to get up early in the morning. So yes, the alarm clock is going to yell at you every single morning, and that's an example of personification. And lastly, imagery. Descriptive language that appeals to the senses. So glittering white, a blanket of snow covered everything in sight. Those are your imagery questions. They're gonna provide you and give you an image of specifically what it is talking about. So that's gonna do it for the ATIT's reading portion of your ATIT's examination for getting into any kind of healthcare 
um, program that you want to get into because I know it's used for multiple programs. I hope that this was helpful. Next week we're going to be moving on to the math portion. If you haven't already reviewed the previous reading portions, I left links down below. I highly advise that you go back and review those so that you know what to expect on the test. But until next time, I hope that you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon. Bye!